Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. We are reading The Antichrist Revealed, Chapter 2. This is the most important chapter, if you're a Christian, that you will ever read in your life. Please, follow through till the end. I urge you. Hallelujah to Yahuwah. Chapter 2, The Name of God, the Messiah, and the False Messiah. Proverbs 30, verse 4. Who has gone up to the heaven and come down? Whose hands have gathered up the wind? Who has wrapped up the waters in a cloak? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is the name of his son? Surely you know. That's pretty clear there. It's important to know. Introduction. The name of the Jewish Messiah in the Hebrew Bible uses Yahusha, and then later modern form of Yeshua, for the English transliteration of Joshua, <clears throat> which means Yahuwah is salvation, Yasha, Yahuwah, Yasha, Yah being the short poetic form of Yahuwah and Yasha being Hebrew for salvation. Combine into a contracted sentence name, Yahusha. There are several spellings of this set apart name of the Messiah in Scripture, with the most prevalent being Yahusha. Yahusha, used 28 times in the Tanakh. I'm sorry, Yeshua, used 28 times in the Tanakh. Yahusha, used 216 times in the Tanakh. And Yeshua, used two times in the Tanakh. Okay, so what is the Tanakh, you ask? The Tanakh is the Hebrew Bible, the, con the, the canonical collection of Jewish text, which is also the text textual source for most of the Christian Old Testament. It is an acronym made of the initial consonants of the Hebrew words Torah, the law, Okay, what is Torah in Strong's? De the definition of Torah. The law. Direction. Instruction. Instruction. Direction. Body of prophetic teaching. Instruction in messianic age. Body of priestly direction or instruction. Body of legal directives. Law. Law of burnt offering. Of special law. Codes of law. Custom. Manner. The Deuteronomic. Mosaic law. So the Torah is a book called law in English. So it is the book of law. You find that interesting, right? Let's continue on. The two uses of the six lettered spelling are found in Deuteronomy 321 and Judges 2 7. We are given the name of the Messiah directly in Isaiah as Yahuwah speaks through the prophet concerning the day he renews his vows in the renewed covenant below. Isaiah 12 verse 1 You will say in that day, I renew my vows. I will give thanks to you, O Yahuwah, for though you were angry with me for breaking your vows and you divorced me, your anger turned away and you restored me as your bride, that you might comfort me. Behold, Yahuwah is my salvation. This statement is literally naming the covenant of Yahusha by name. Yahusha is a contraction of Yahuwah. Yahusha and means Yahuwah is my salvation. So we can replace that longer form with the contraction and we get behold Yahusha pointing, pointing us directly to our Messiah. This declaration that Yahuwah is my salvation is the name given to Joseph and Mary to name their child for Yahuwah shall Yasha save his own people from their sin through a final I'm sorry through a final Passover sacrifice that final Passover sacrifice would be the purpose of the Messiah in that way Yahusha represents the salvation of Yahuwah Joseph and Mary's son would be that Messiah they were to name this son Yahuwah Yasha or Yahusha in short because he was prophesied to come in the name of Yahuwah. This name 
Yahusha was transliterated into English in the book of Joshua as Joshua in the Bible. Joshua the son of Nun succeeded Moses and led the children of Israel into the promised land, a messianic foreshadowing of the coming Messiah in deed and name. Yahusha would lead the children of Yahuwah out of slavery to sin and into the promised land of eternal life. The son of Nun's name was actually Yahusha, not Joshua. We also see the Messiahs named by name in Zechariah chapter 3 as Yahusha was consecrated high priest directly by Yahusha. I'm sorry, directly by Yahuwah. Why then did the scribes transliterate? Transliterate means not a literal translation. The name of the Messiah in the New Testament, not keeping true to the English translation Joshua like they did in the Old Testament, they instead and intentionally mistranslated the name into Jesus in the New Testament, which isn't even a name in Hebrew and in no way at all implies or has the name Yahuwah in it. Jesus fails a major test by failing to fulfill the prophecy that he would come in Yahuwah's name. So in name only, Jesus is a false messiah, but it gets much, much worse. The translators obviously know the English transliteration was Joshua, not Jesus. They had transcribed it semi-correctly in the so-called Old Hebrew Scriptures. They also were well aware the Messiah was a Jewish rabbi with a Jewish name, not a Greek name with Greek conventions that give glory to a Greek God. What is most important about the name of the Messiah is that the intent of the name remains intact. intact. As we go from Paleo-Hebrew to Modern Hebrew to any other language, and in our case especially English. Intent of the name. The interesting, it is interesting to know that while the Messiah's name gives glory to Yahuwah as our Savior, Yahuwah's name points us to his chosen proxy, his son, the Hebrew alphabet. The name of the Hebrew letter, ancient, ancient uh, Semitic picture character. This is the Paleo Hebrew. Okay, this is the meaning here. Hey, Vod, God. Behold, nail, peg, hand. Yah. Or Yahweh. In Hebrew, it's Yahweh. Behold the hand, behold the nail. Hebrew reads, hand, behold, nail. Behold. So we see in the original pictograph of the Creator's name, as well as the message written in the stars, foretells of the coming and the sacrifice of Yahusha the Messiah. The intent of what the name means should remain in any language not just a literal attempt at translating each letter into a letter in another language that was the very reason the messiah was named Yahusha to begin with because that name embodies the intent of Yahuwah to save Yasha his people it was this way of translating the name of the messiah that is in error translating each letter and ignoring the intent of the name that Satan was able to manipulate humanity as we will soon see. It was after all the intent behind why the Messiah was named that was important and all this is found in both the prophets and when the angel brought the meaning of the name in Hebrew to Joseph and Mary we should be obedient to this intent in any language and then look to the Hebrew for the meaning of the name in of the Messiah and not derive the name of our Messiah by Greek and Latin transliterations. That intent of the Messiah's name was to make a very clear statement. Yahuwah is our Savior. This truth is well established in his word. The Messiah himself never intended to take glory away from Yahuwah. Yahusha instructed us to pray to Yahuwah and to give glory to his holy name. Matthew 6 9 reads pray then in this way our father who is in heaven hallowed be your name Yahuwah he did not instruct us to pray in his own name but the name of Yahuwah the Creator funny how Christians completely disobey that command by the Messiah and pray in the name of Jesus isn't it 
After all, Jesus is the image of a man elevated in the hearts above God, in their hearts above God, which is an abomination to Yahuwah, as we will see in this book. The problem is that the translators literally remove the name of Yahuwah from the Bible based on some human Jewish tradition that the name was too holy to look at or pronounce. The name Yahuwah was in the word of Yahuwah. It is his word, after all, over 8,000 times, and taken out and replaced with the Lord, or Lord God, in violation of Yahuwah's commands not to add or to subtract from his word. This is an abomination. The effect of replacing the name of Yahuwah with titles. <clears throat> Ezekiel 36.23 And I shall set apart my great name, which has been profaned among the Gentiles, which you have profaned in their midst. And the Gentiles shall know that I am Yahuwah, declares the Master, when I am set apart in you before their eyes. We have sufficient proof showing that the name of Yahuwah has been completely corrupted, erased from the Holy Scriptures, and from common knowledge and use altogether. Because of the man-made traditions of our forefathers and Jewish rabbis, the Century Bible, Volume 1, pages 90-91, tells us the following. Sometime after the return of the captivity and before the beginning of the Christian era, the Jews came to believe the tradition that the holy name Yahuwah was too sacred to be uttered on ordinary occasions. It was said, tradition to be pronounced by the high priest on the day of atonement at other times when anyone read or quoted aloud from what is called the Old Testament, the Torah, the law, the titles Adonai, Lord and God was usually substituted for Yahuwah by tradition and similarly the Septuagint version has Kyrios, the Vulgate Dominus, and the EV Lord, where the Hebrew has Yahuwah. Hebrew was originally written without vowels, but when the vowel points were added, the vowels of Adoni or Elohim were written according to tradition, adding titles instead of the name with Yahuwah as a direction that these words were to be read instead of the word whose consonants were Yahuwah, the name given to Moses in Paleo-Hebrew. Pronounce Yahuwah. I'm sorry, that's Yahweh. <clears throat> Yahuwah in English. Thus we find the combinations of Yahuwah or Yahweh at the Reformation, the former being the more usual, was sometimes used as the name of the Mighty One of Israel, and owing to ignorance of its history, it was misread as Jehovah a form which has established itself in English, but does not give the pronunciation of the holy name it represents. Oh, wow, imagine that. What is stated above is that the Lord, Lord God, and Adoni are titles, not his name, and that Jehovah is not his name either. And many today claim Yahuwah's name is Jehovah, Yahuwah, or He Hashem, which came from using bow points incorrectly taken from the word Elohim, God, Yahweh, the E and O and I being the vowel points of in Elohim. These mistranslations are meant to be Yahweh, which is properly pronounced Yahuwah, with vowels added to illustrate the proper pronunciation. The Messiah, Yahusha, made his feelings about the use of tradition as justification for changing the original words of Yahuwah clear. Mark 7.13 Thus you nullify the word of Yahuwah by your tradition that you have handed down, and you do many things like that. The Creator's name, Yahuwah, was never intended to be hidden or unspoken. Rather, it was always intended to be written, and to be glorified in speech, song, and worship. John 12.28 Father, glorify your name, Yahuwah. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. Psalm 69.30 Then I will praise Yahuwah's name with singing, and I will honor him with thanksgiving. What does the Bible say that God's name is? Jeremiah 33.2 This is what Yahuwah says, Who made the earth? Yahuwah. Who formed it to establish it? Yahuwah is his name. Wow. Exodus 3.15 Yahuwah also said to Moses, This also 
you shall say to the children of Israel, Yahuwah, the heavenly father of your fathers, the mighty one of Abraham, the mighty one of Isaac, and the mighty one of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial, the name by which I am to be remembered by from generation to generation for all generations. Isaiah 42.8 I am Yahuwah, that is my name, and my glory I will not give to another, nor my praise to graven images. Psalm 68.4 Sing to Yahuwah, sing praises, his name, to his name. Extol our Father who rides in the clouds by his name, Yahuwah, and rejoice it in front of him. The true Messiah, Yahusha, was prophesied to come in the name of Yahuwah, and Yahusha clearly acknowledged this fact. Psalms 118 Blessed is he who comes in the name of Yahuwah. In fact, the Gospel of Luke, Yahusha, in a plea to repent or perish, the Messiah actually stated that the only those who acknowledge that his name gives glory to Yahuwah will ever see him again. Wow. Luke 13 Jerusalem Jerusalem you who kill the prophets and stone those that sent you how often have I longed to gather your children together as hen gathers her chicks under her wings and you were not willing look at your house it is left to you desolate I tell you you will not see me again until you say blessed is he who comes in the name of Yahuwah John 12 13 Hosanna blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Yahuwah. John 17, 6. I have spoken your name, Yahuwah, unto the men which you gave me out of the world. <clears throat> Sorry, I get a little worked up about this because it's, it's frustrating that we've been lied to our whole lives. Generation after generation. The requirement to call the Messiah by the intent of his name, in that he came in the name of Yahuwah, as the salvation of Yahuwah, or Yahusha, is clear. Remember, there is only one name under heaven that paves the way to salvation through Yahuwah. This is why those who come to Yahusha at the time of judgment, calling him another name, are rejected. These people are confused because they thought they knew him, calling him Jesus, only to be rejected by him for not knowing his name and not keeping the law of Yahuwah and proclaiming the name Yahusha, acknowledging that he came in the name of Yahuwah. There is absolutely no chance you can get the name Yahuwah out of Jesus, or Jesus, or Isis. But rather, that name, like all pagan Greek names, give glory to Zeus. This is something Christianity simply cannot admit. True and false disciples are defined by the name. Under the heading True and False Disciples, in the book of Matthew, we see that the definition of true and false is tied directly to the name of the Messiah. Many of those who call him Lord, which is not a name, but a title given to every British landowner for the past thousand years, and celebrities and other pagan idols that aren't even gods, they call themselves gods, fallen angels, and think they know his name, calling him Jesus, discover they never knew the real Messiah. In your name is emphasized three times in Matthew below because we are warned of a false Messiah that almost the entire world falls to by deception. And the name is the primary issue. Not just a translation error. It's, the, it's a primary issue. Yahusha tells those who call him by this meaningless, empty, and pagan name, Jesus, to depart from him, they never knew him. Yahusha goes on to explain, you evil doers, you evil doers, or in some translations, you who practice lawlessness, which is a Hebrew word for Yahusha, used actually means in English, Torahless. Those who call him Jesus and abolish the law of Yahuwah are the exact ones he is speaking to, Christians. Matthew 7 verse 21 not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. 
Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name drive out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Literally translated, those who do not keep the Torah. This might need to sink in a little, because it blew my mind when I started researching. The first thing we want to do before we get into anything else is clearly establish the name of the Creator, God, the name of the Messiah, and the name of the false Messiah. In order to clearly prove that Yahusha is the true name of the Messiah, we must first establish the true name of the Creator, the one and only God, Yahuwah. John 17 verse 3. This is eternal life, that they may know you the only one true God, and be in covenant with Yahusha the Messiah, whom you have sent, Yahuwah, according to the plan of salvation. What is the name of the Creator? Yahuwah. The name of the Creator gave, gave when Moses asked who sent him to deliver the children of Israel is Yahuwah. Yahuwah, however, I'm sorry, Yahuwah in, in Paleo Hebrew, Yahuwah, however, is not the actual name. It is how we write the name, Yahweh. In English so that we can pronounce it the name Yahweh gave Moses is a four-letter paleo Hebrew word that contains no vowels and Yahweh in modern Hebrew is which in English translates to Yahuwah it is compromise of the four Hebrew characters Yad He Vav He which sounds like Yahuwah when pronounced this name is known as the tetragrammation Tetra four and grammation letters. Shh, Mariah. Shh. No. The literal translation from the Hebrew characters of Yad He Vav He is Yahweh or Yahweh. Yahuwah. I use this name or the English spelling of how it is pronounced, Yahuwah, to be as accurate as I can be in the English language. In all my writings, the letters Yahuwah, or the letters Y-H-W-H, are most often used as the English transliteration of Yahuwah, as the letter Vav makes the sound of the English letter W when pronounced. Both are acceptable forms of the Creator's name, in my opinion. I just choose Yahuwah to illustrate the pronunciation. Below are sources to demonstrate the true name of the Creator, Yahuwah, and not Lord, Baal. The Jewish Encyclopedia of 1901, Volume 12, page 119 states, It thus becomes possible to determine with a fair degree of certainty the historical pronunciation of the Tetragrammation, the results agreeing with the statement of in which Yahuwah terms himself Hayah will be a phrase which is immediately preceded by the fuller term I will be that I will be or as in the English versions I am that I am the name is accordingly derived from the root and is regarded as an imperfect this passage is a decisive for the pronunciation Yahuwah for the etym etymology was undoubtedly based on the known word the Encyclopedia Judanica, Volume 7, page 680, further states the fact. This fact, the true pronunciation of the name Yahweh, was never lost. S several early Greek writers of the Christian Church testify that the name was pronounced Yahuwah. This is confirmed, at least for the vowel of the first syllable of the name, by the shorter form Yah, which is sometimes used in poetry, and uh, Yahu or Yah, that serves as the final syllable and over 150 Hebrew names in the Bible, in the Torah. The Encyclopedia Britannica, volume 23, page 867, confirms this fact. Yahuwah, the proper name of the God of Israel. It is composed of four consonants. 
in Hebrew and is therefore called the Tetragrammaton. I do not know how to say those letters in Hebrew or pronounce them. I apologize. The Universal Jewish Encyclopedia, Volume 9, page 160, confirms this fact. The names of God in the Old Testament, that which occurs most frequently 6,823 times, is the so-called Tetragrammaton, the distinctive personal name of the God of Israel, Yahuwah. The Church deceived us all. The Jewish Encyclopedia, Volume 12, pages 118 through 119, confirms this fact also. Tetragrammation, the quadrilateral name of God. The Tetragrammation is the ancient Israelitish name for God, Yahuwah. The Jewish Encyclopedia, Volume 9, pages 162 through 163, also shows us that while the rabbis recognized only one proper name for the Creator, they also considered other names as titles for the Creator. As you'll read this excerpt, notice, the, notice and remember the title Adonai that was used in place of the Creator's name, which I think means Father or Daddy. <clears throat> the rabbis, as well as the Kabbalist, Kabbalist, steadfastly maintain their belief in monotheism. Hence, they recognize only one proper name for the deity, considering the other names as appellations or titles signifying divinity perfection and power or as characterizing his acts as observed and appreciated by mankind the name Yahuwah is considered as the name proper it was known in the earliest rabbinical work simply as the name and as Yad He Vav He spelling letters of Yahuwah therefore anytime you see the Lord or Lord God in the Old Testament realized that originally it was written in Hebrew as Yahuwah or Yahuwah Elohim when you see Lord in all caps in the New Testament it is referring to Yahuwah but when you see the Lord not in all caps that is a mistranslation of HaMashiach which is Hebrew for the anointed king of Israel and is referring to Yahusha. It is through the use of these titles and not the proper names that confusion and false doctrines are born. Why does my English Bible use the Lord? The Lord is not a name of the Creator. That is the name title for the Babylonian sun god Baal and is a pagan reference to just about all pagan gods. The Lord is a false god. I know this is going to be hard for many. Wikipedia, Baal. Baal, also rendered as Baal, Biblical Hebrew, is a Northwest Semitic title, an honorific meaning master or lord, that is used for various gods who were patrons of the cities in Levant and Asia Minor. Cognate to Alcadian Baalu, a Baalist or Baalite means a worshiper of Baal, i.e., the Lord. <laughs> wow. Baal or the Lord can refer to any God and even human officials in some texts even celebrities it is used for Hadad a God of the rain thunder fertility ag agriculture and the Lord of heaven since only priests were allowed to utter his divine name Hadad Baal was commonly used since only priests were allowed to utter his divine name Baal was commonly used nevertheless Few, if any, biblical uses of Baal refer to Hadad, the Lord over the assembly of gods on the holy mount of heaven. Most refer to a variety of local spirit deities worshipped as cult images, each called Baal and regarded in the Hebrew Bible in that context as false god. Holy moly! It's time to wake up come out of her my people etymology Baal a Semitic word signifying the Lord master owner male keeper husband Wow 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 <clears throat> Yahuwah told Elijah and Jeremiah that the Israelites would adopt the way of the pagans 
in Babylon who worship Baal and forget his name, Yahuwah, and use the title the Lord, which is a reference to Baal. 1 Kings 18. I have not made trouble for Israel, Elijah replied, but you and your father's family have. You have abandoned Yahuwah's commands and have followed Baal, the Lord. Jeremiah 23, I have heard what the prophets say who prophesy lies in my name. They say, I had a dream, I had a dream. How long will this continue in the hearts of these lying prophets who prophesy the delusions of their own minds? They think the dreams they tell one another will make my people forget my name? Just as their ancestors forgot my name through Baal, the Lord worship. I know, it's upsetting. We were lied to. So I, we now know the truth. You know, at least now we know the truth. We can correct ourselves. We can we can stop praying in that way immediately. The Lord Baal was worshipped on Sunday, the day of the invincible sun, or Dale Solus. And the sacrifice to the Lord Baal was the pig of Ishtar, Easter in Babylon. I cover this in great detail in my book, Babylon, the Religion of the Beast. The prophecies in 1 Kings that would abandon Yahuwah to follow Baal have come true in Christianity. Who calls on the Lord on Sunday and who put their faith in Easter? Just as Jeremiah foretold we would forget the name Yahuwah and use the Lord as they did in Babylon, we see below that the name Yahuwah was regularly pronounced by his chosen until superstitious Jews who adopted the pagan practices of their Babylonian captors changed the name Yahuwah to the Lord coming out of Babylonian captivity. Traditions of Men The Encyclopedia Judanica, Volume 7, pages 680-682 through 682. Yahweh or Yahuwah, <coughs> both acceptable the personal name of the God of Israel is written in the Hebrew Bible with the four consonants and is referred to as a tetragrammation, at least until the destructions of the first temple in 586 BCE. This name was regularly pronounced with its proper vowels, Yahuwah, as is clear from the Lachish letters written shortly before that date, but at least by the third century BCE. The pronunciation of the name Yah Yahweh was avoided and Adoni, the Lord, was substituted for it, as evidenced by the use of the Greek word Kyrios, Lord, for Yahweh, in the Septuagint, the translation of the Hebrew scriptures that was begun by Greek-speaking Jews in that century, where the combined form Adone occurs in the Bible, this was read as I'm sorry, Adonai Yahweh occurs in the Bible. This was read as Adonai Elohim, Lord God. <clears throat> wow. We see below from the same source that the Jews, we see below from the same source that the Jews replaced the proper vowel points in Yahuwah with the vowel points in Adonai to avoid saying his name, giving us the name Yahweh in error. Then uninspired Christian translators came up with the totally foreign name Jehovah out of ignorance. Then later, in total disconnect from all reality, the Jews started just saying Hashem and totally abandoned the name of the Creator altogether. The Encyclopedia Judanica, Volume 7, page 680 through 682, continued in the early Middle Ages. When the consonantal text of the Bible was supplied with vowel points to facilitate its correct traditional reading, the vowel points for Adonai, with one variation of a Shiva, with the first Yod of Yahweh, instead of the Hatath Patath under the Elf of Adonai, were used for Yahweh, thus producing the form Yahuwah. Then, I'm sorry, when Christian scholars of Europe first began to study Hebrew, they did not understand what this really meant, and they introduced the hybrid name Jehovah in order to avoid pronouncing even the sacred name Adonai for Yahweh. 
the custom was later introduced of saying simply in Hebrew Hashem or the Aramaic Shemek the name even in such an expression as blessed be he that cometh in the name of Yahuwah this is an abomination Yahuwah gave us his name and he declares that it is his memorial for all generations oh it's like gives me a headache and just <laughs> Sorry. Exodus 3.15 And Yahuwah said moreover unto Moses, Thus shall they say unto the children of Israel, Yahuwah, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me unto you. This, Yahuwah, is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Memorial. Not, not, not Baal. His name is not the Lord or Adonai or Hashem or anything else. His name is Yahuwah, and that is his everlasting memorial by which is which he is to be called upon. Our English Bibles use the title the Lord for Yahuwah, which is a violation of the command not to add nor to subtract from His word. Not to mention it is idolatry, calling upon the Babylonian god Baal. We humanity have totally forgotten the name of our Creator, which was originally written in His Word over 8,000 times. We replaced every reference to it with the Lord Baal. Below, we see the Jews committed this abomination out of what I call reverent stupidity, as they followed the way of the pagans in Babylon. Unger's Bible Dictionary on page 665 reads, Lord Hebrew Adon, an early word denoting ownership, hence absolute control. Hmm. It is not properly a divine title. Hmm. The Jews, out of superstitious reverence. Hmm. For the name Yahuwah, always in reading pronounce Adonai, Lord, where Yahuwah is written. This is crazy. Smith's Bible Dictionary. 1872 edition states the following the substitution of the word Lord is most sad <laughs> for while it in no way represents the meaning of the sacred name Yahuwah the mind has to constantly guard against a confusion with its lower uses and above all the direct personal hearing of the name of the revelation of Yahuwah is injuriously out of sight yeah this is extremely important as the name of the Messiah contains the tetragrammation to fulfill the prophetic requirements of the one name under heaven whereby we must obtain salvation. Acts 4.12 Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. When I quote scripture in this book, no matter what translation we use. We will always replace the pagan reference and title of the Lord Baal with Yahuwah and Little Lord with Messiah as it applies to Yahusha. This is how they created the Trinity. They mixed up the names replacement theology. We always will clarify in context the use of impersonal pronouns such as he and him by identifying the subject by name as originally written. We will turn the text from a passive voice to an active voice. We will demonstrate when the uninspired translations are corrected in this way, the truth comes shining through as to the real meaning of the text. In doing so, many of the scriptures used to justify the false doctrines of the Incarnation and the Trinity completely fall apart in light of the truth. Ain't that the truth? So stay with us. Salvation is found exclusively in the declaration that Yahuwah is salvation, not Jesus. Jesus is a pagan name for a pagan God that doesn't even exist. Isaiah 43:11 and 45:21. I even I am Yahuwah and beside me there is no savior. 
a just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. Hmm. The biblical instruction, that name of the Messiah, must embody the idea that Yahuwah is our Savior, is clear. Below, Joel literally gives us the name of the Messiah, the name that we, or that whoever calls on the name, Yahusha, will be saved. In Hebrew, Yahusha is a contracted form of the sentence, Yahuwah will save. So you can legally replace the phrase below, Yahuwah will be saved, with the contracted form of that sentence, Yahusha. Amazing. Joel 2, verse 30. <clears throat> I will display wonders. You see that? I. No trinity. I will display wonders in the sky and on the earth blood, fire, and columns of smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and awesome day of Yahuwah comes. And it will come about that whoever calls on the name of Yahuwah will be saved. <coughs> Excuse me. Which could legally read, whoever calls on the name Yahusha, as Yahusha is a contracted sentence name, meaning Yahuwah is salvation. So, in the scripture above, it can legally be translated to say, and it, it will come about that whoever calls on the name of Yahusha, directly pointing us to the true name of the Messiah, which is, which is contracted from Yahuwah, Yasha, using the poetic form of Yah, <coughs> and the Hebrew word for salvation, Yasha, giving us Yahusha, or Yahusha, 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 or Yahusha. I sometimes I say Yahshua, Yahshua or Yahusha. <clears throat> Both of them are the same thing. One is Yahuwah is salvation and the other one's Yahuwah's salvation. So you will hear me say Yahusha or, or yeah, Yahusha or Yahshua. Both are the same. One's a sentence, one's contracted, one's not contracted. Below we see that the messenger of Yahuwah delivered the name of the Messiah and we see the name was given because it is a name with meaning. That meaning is Yahuwah will save his people from their sin. That name that was given to Joseph and Mary was Yahusha which was mistranslated into English as Aesis, Jesus, Jesus, which is not a name in Hebrew. Matthew 121 she will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Yahusha because he Yah will deliver Yasha his people from their sins we see below that the Messiah must come in the name of Yahuwah i.e. Yahusha you see that how it, the, the, the son embodies the father's name Yah Makes a lot more sense now. And this is how they tricked us. Psalms 118. Blessed is he who comes in the name of Yahuwah. I mean, here it's over and over again. John 12:13. Hosanna. Blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of Yahuwah. How do we not catch this? I don't know. When I read the Bible, I caught on to it pretty quick. We see below that Yahusha dealt with these names these same issues as the Jews had removed the name of Yahuwah from Yahusha, shortened it to Yesha, in error, coming out of Babylon due to reverent stupidity as to not speak the name Yah. Yahusha was not happy with the Jews misusing his name, speaking it as Yeshua instead of Yahusha, and warned them all they would ever see him, I'm sorry, they warned them that they would never see him again until they admitted his name is Yahusha, not Yeshua, not Yahushia, not Jesus, not Jesus, not Lord. Only one of those names is the name of Yahuwah, and that is Yahusha, the only name under heaven by which you may be saved. Luke 13 35 look your house is left to you desolate I tell you you will not see me again until you say 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of Yahuwah. Hmm. Yahusha did not make that critical error of removing the name of Yahuwah. He used the name Yahuwah often. And that is one of the reasons he fell afoul with the rabbinical Judaism of his day, as their ears were offended by the use of the name of Yahuwah. They had their own man-made laws and traditions. John 17.6 I have manifested my name, Yahuwah, unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. It is, it is a clear biblical command from Yahuwah that the name of the Messiah must embody Yah and must declare salvation, Yasha. Any name that doesn't embody this intent is a counterfeit. Every time you utter the name Yahusha, you are literally making the required declaration in Joel that whoever calls on the name of Yahuwah will be saved. The Messiah's name is Theoponis. Theoponis. Ah, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce that. One of the first things we should learn in our search for the true Messiah for the true Messiah is his name. The importance of knowing this man's name cannot be overstated. Names were and are very important to the Hebrew people, and their meanings are of great significance. Not only are names significant to individuals, but also to entire families. The name Jesus is an invention of man which in no way carries the meaning of the true name of this man mentioned in the New Testament. We'll look at this name later in this chapter. The simple fact, which is easily proven from authoritative sources, is that this man, the Messiah, spoken of in Scripture, was born a Hebrew, and he had a Hebrew name, not a Greek name such as Jesus. There is no such name as Jesus in the Hebrew language. Therefore, there is no definition, no meaning, no intent, nothing. Reading from the Encyclopedia Judanica, we find that the supposed name Jesus is actually the common Greek transliteration of the Hebrew name Joshua, which is the Helionized, uninspired transliteration of Yahusha into English funny how they did it right in the Old Testament but in the New Testament they just did something completely different Encyclopedia Judanica volume 10 page 10 reads Jesus whom Christianity sees as its founder and object of faith was a Jew who lived toward the end of the second commonwealth period the name birth and death date of Jesus is the common Greek form of the Hebrew name Joshua in Hebrew Yahusha, Jesus' father, Joseph, Yosef, his mother Mary, in Hebrew, Miriam, and his brothers James, uh, Judah, Joseph, and Simon, Mark 6.3, likewise bore very popular Hebrew names. <clears throat> the Encyclopedia Judanica gives us additional information con concerning the Hebrew spelling of Yahusha which is, you know, yad he wa shin -ayin, or literally, Yahusha. Joshua is not an accurate translation into English either. It is the Helionized version, with the intent, again, to remove the name Yahuwah from it. Yes, you know, at first I thought, well, Joshua's okay, but it, then again, it doesn't, it's not embodying Yahuwah. See, Yahuwah is the creator. Yahuwah is where the salvation comes from. Yahusha provides the sacrifice and the, the message. <sighs> More on that later. The Encyclopedia Judanica, Volume 12, page 805. The first personal name that was definitely constructed with the tetragrammation is Joshua. Well, there you have it. The source also points out to us that his name, this name, correctly pronounced Yahusha, is a compound name constructed with the tetragrammation, which is the name Yahuwah. The name Yahusha follows the common practice among the true worshippers of Yahuwah who did not follow Jewish superstition and remove the name of the Creator from the name, informing 
and using compound names which brought glory to Yahuwah's name. The Jewish Encyclopedia tells us about compound names which glorify Yahuwah. The Jewish Encyclopedia, Volume 9, page 153. A distinctive characteristic of Bible uh, onomatology is the frequency of composite names, which form at times even complete sentences. As in the case of Isaiah's son, Shir Jashab, the remnant shall return. In the majority of cases, these composite names are theo Theophorus referring to or actually mentioning the name of Yahuwah using the shortened poetic form, Yah. The Interpreter's Dictionary, Volume 3, page 505, tells us there is an increasing tendency, especially in the 7th century BC, to use compound names which state a fact or express a wish. The most numerous are names compounded with Yah, which number over 150 names in the Bible and are almost entirely personal or family names. They also give meaning of, about that person who has that name, giving more information to the person reading the scripture for more understanding, for more wisdom. <clears throat> Just common practice to construct sentence names that convey an expression. Giving glory to Yahuwah in Hebrew can be found in many names throughout scripture. The names <clears throat> the names in our modern translations were helianized to remove all Hebrew nature from them. In the process, they removed the glory given to Yahuwah as they intended. This process of helianization was brought about due to the wars between Rome and the Jews and the hatred for the Jews as a result. The new religion formed in Rome needed a present needed to present a new savior that could be accepted by Greeks and a new gospel that eliminated all Jewishness from it that the pagan religions would accept. This is called synchronism and I cover this in detail in the book Christianity and the Great Deception. The names in our English Bibles are meaningless. Removing the compound name the com I'm sorry, removing the compound name structures found in Hebrew as well as the very meaning of their names which give glory to Yahuwah. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is crazy. You know, this is why I bought the Sefer, but the Sefer is just as deceiving as the Bible, which you will find out later in this book. Okay, so here's all these other names in the Bible that we didn't realize actually shout out the name of our Creator as well the prophets, the apostles, and so forth, anointed ones. Samuel, which should be Shemel, meaning heard of Yahuwah. Daniel, Daniel, Yahuwah is my judge. Elijah, my, my God is Yahuwah. I see Elijah is like, a, I think more of a title. Isaiah should be Yahuwah is salvation. Hosea should be Yahuwah saves Joel. I'm sorry, Yahuwah saves. Joel should be Yahuwah is our strength. Almos should be corroborated by Yahuwah. Obadiah should be worshiper of Yahuwah. Jonah should be ornament of Yahuwah. Micah should be who is like Yahuwah. Nahum should be consolation of Yahuwah. Zephaniah should be protected by Yahuwah. Haggai should be feast of Yahuwah. Zechariah should be remembrance of Yahuwah. Malachi should be messenger of Yahuwah. Matthew should be gift of Yahuwah. John should be Yahuwah is merciful. Paul should be asked of Yahuwah. And Yahusha meaning Yahuwah is salvation. Joshua. The name Yahusha is just such a contracted compound sentence name. It is a combination of Yahuwah's name into a contracted personal name, Yah, and Shua. The name Yahusha means Yahuwah will save, or Yahuwah is our savior. The Hebrew English lexicon of the Old Testament tells us that the name Yahusha means Yahuwah is salvation. We see below that the original form of the name is Yahusha, but was 
later shortened, which is Yeshua, in order to remove Yahuwah's name. Man, they just hate our Creator. They really hate Him. The Hebrew English Lexicon of the Old Testament by Brown, Draver, and Briggs, page 221. Is salvation and later so this is Yahusha is salvation in any case name should be associated with blah 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 in a long change from of to later Moses Moses successor son of none etc the Hebraic tongue restored gives us this information concerning the Hebrew word Shua we find that this word comes from the word Yasha the Hebraic tongue restored by Fab Fabria Aloviet, page 462. Every idea of conversion, restoration, cementation. In the literal tense, lime cement, in a figurative sense, that which consolidates, guarantees, which serves as a safeguard, which preserves. Yeshua, I mean, Shua, preserves, safeguard. Genesis Hebrew Chalidi Lexicon to the Old Testament tells us that Yasha implies to be freed from danger and distress. Hebrew Lexicon of the Old Testament, page 811. Hmm. Let's see, freed from danger and distress. Yeah, let me see. The Hebrew English Lexicon of the Old Testament by Brown Dever Braggs 447 tells us about the word Yasha and Shua specifically express the idea salvation is from Yahuwah. I'm not going to go through and read all that. You can pause it or read it. But you can see. Safety, welfare, prosperity. By Yahuwah or Yahweh. Salvation from Yahweh. Concording Yahweh is salvation. Light in my salvation. <clears throat> Note that these sources use the modern English name Yahuwah for the correct name Yahuwah. Or Yahweh for the correct name Yahuwah. The modern name Yahuwah is not accurate to the name given in the Paleo Hebrew to Moses, which was. I don't know how to say that. The modern English version uses the W instead of the U. This was done by the Germans, who combined the U into a double U and then created a new character we call the W in the late 14th century. So Yahuwah cannot be the most accurate. Um, name nor can the nor the name given to Moses for that reason I do not adhere to the modern translation of Yahuwah but rather the original pronunciation of Yahuwah we read of the origin of the W below I don't know it didn't really make much sense to me but Wikipedia the Germania phoneme therefore written as becoming distinct only by the early modern period the seventh or eighth century by the earliest writers of the Old Testament, Old English, and Old High German. It is from this UU diagraph that the modern name W derives. It was probably considered a separate letter by the 14th century in the both Middle English and Middle German orthography, although it remained an outsider, not really considered part of the Latin alphabet proper as expressed by the Valadian. Lucas Schammer in the 16th century who complained that poor W is so infamous and unknown that many barely know either its name nor its shape nor those who aspire to being Latinist as they have no need of it nor do the Germans not even the schoolmasters know what to do with it or how to call it. Hmm. Thus we have this name is correctly pronounced Yahusha instead of Yahushua or uh, Yah Yahusha since the work Shua is derived from the word Yasha and considering the letter the, the letter Wa in this compound is silent just as the Hebraic tongue restored tells us Hebraic tongue restored by Fabri Olivet, conjunctive or convertible article. This article and uniting nouns causes the movement of nothingness of which the character W becomes the sign. As we have seen in making actions pass from one time to another, it, ex it exercises upon them the convertible fac faculty of which this same character is the universal emblem. 
its conjunctive movement can be rendered by and also thus then afterward that etc but its convertible movement is not expressible in our tongue and i do not know of any in which it can be expressed in order to perceive it one must feel the hebraic genius where do we get yahusha yeshua and yahusha so the last two pages are kind of like the yeshua and yahusha the documentation on how they were created and whatever they were completely wrong where do we get Yahshua instead of Yahusha? Yeshua and Yahosha. Yahusha is correct. And why do some instead use Yahshua? Yeshua and Yahosha. Yahshua is Aramaic for Yahusha, and I really don't have a problem with the use of Yahshua as it was Aramaic that was spoken at the time of the Second Temple period. However, Yeshua and Ye Yeshua are not correct, as these two names insert the letters E and O instead of an A and a U, as where we have demonstrated. Are these names Yeshua and Yeshua the true name? Many in the Hebrew Roots movement use the name Yeshua, as that is the modern Hebrew name today is not correct because it does not say Yah. Yahuwah does not embody Yahuwah the Creator. They too refuse to admit that Yeshua does not embody the name Yah. Ye means He and is passive, does not directly identify Yahuwah by name. These names remove Yahuwah's name, thereby failing the scriptural test concerning the requirement to express Yahuwah is our Savior. Very simple the Israelites adopted the worship of Lord Baal and therefore removed the name of Yahuwah and replaced it with the Lord. They also then either shortened the name Yahusha to Yeshua to remove the name Yahuwah and replace the vowel points with the vowel points in Elohim giving us Yahusha, Yahuasha. Both Yeshua and Yahu Yehosha are attempts to not use, write, or pronounce the name Yah, our Creator. We see below that the worship of Baal, the Lord, was assimilated into the worship of Yahuwah. This is known as synchronism. Yes, we were tricked. It was the replacing of the name of Yahuwah that led to the decline of Israel as a people. Jewish Encyclopedia the unedited full text of the 1906 Jewish Encyclopedia, How the Hebrews Adopted <laughs> the Cult, the Pagans. <clears throat> it would appear that the Hebrews first learned Baal worship from the agriculture Canaanites. Their life before the conquest of Canaan, whether lived in or outside of Palestine, was nomadic, and therefore kept them beyond the circle of religious associations promoted by the cultivation of the soil. After their settlement, the Israelites began to live as did the people of the land, and with the new mode of industrial and domestic life came the example and the incitement of the religious use and want that were inseparable from the soil. The stated festivals in which bales of the land had drawn to themselves all the enthusiasm and devotion of an intensified or intensely religious people were a part of the fixed order of things in Palestine were a part of the fixed order of things in Palestine and were necessarily appropriated by the religion of Yahuwah. With them came the danger of mixing the rites of the false gods and the true God and as a matter of fact the synchronism did take place wow and contributed to more than anything else to the to the religious and moral decline of Israel. Well, there you have it, folks. <sighs> Jewish Encyclopedia. I mean, over a hundred years ago. As I pointed out earlier, the Jews developed a superstition I call reverent stupidity. 
that it was too holy to pronounce the name of Yahuwah, or even lay eyes on it. So they replaced every occurrence of the name Yahuwah over 8,000 times in Scripture with the title Lord in keeping with their Babylonian captors whose God was also the Lord God Baal. This abomination carried forward and at the time of the current modern translations were penned they used these faulty Hebrew texts coming out of the Babylonian captivity not the original Hebrew scriptures prior to Babylonian captivity. These modern uninspired translations in English carried forward the superstition that superstition not to write the name of God they also removed the name Yah from the name Yahusha giving us Yeshua instead of the then translated Yeshua into Iesus and then finally into Jesus where the scribes encountered the true name of the Messiah which is pronounced Yahusha with the proper vowel points added they translated it with the vowel points of Elohim not Yahuwah giving us yes whatever that is Yahushua instead of Yahusha that is where and how we get Yeshua and Yahusha and Jesus instead of Yahusha the Messiah the true name this is not even the fault of the Christian church they were just following the lead of the Jews who began worshiping Baal while in Babylonian captivity we have sufficient proof showing that the name of Yahuwah has been completely erased from the Holy Scriptures and from common knowledge and use altogether. Look at the world today, folks. We see below that it was the Jews who first began subtracting the name of the Creator from His own Word. The Century Bible, Volume 1, pages 90-91 through 91, tells us the following. Some time after the return of the cap from the captivity and before the beginning of the Christian era, the Jews came to believe that the holy name Yahuwah was too sacred to be uttered on ordinary occasions. It was said to be pronounced by the high priest on the day of atonement only. At other times, when anyone read or quoted aloud from what is called the Old Testament or the Torah, the law, the word Adonai or Lord, was usually substituted for and similarly the Septuagint has the Lord where the Hebrew has Yahuwah. Hebrew was originally written without vowels but when the vowel points were added Yahweh or I'm sorry when the vowel points were added yeah the Yahweh or of Adonai or Elohim were written with as a direction that these words were to be read instead of the words whose consonants were Yahuwah. Thus we find the combinations uh, Yahuwah or Yahuwah. At the Reformation, the former being the more usual, was sometimes used as the name of the Mighty One of Israel, and owing to ignorance of its history, was misread as Jehovah, as a form which has established itself in English, but does not give the pronunciation of the holy name it represents. Wow. The Theological Dictionary of the New Testament, Kittle and Bromley, Volume 3, page 284, tells us that the name Jesus, Iesus, is a Greek form of the Hebrew proper name, Yahusha. Keep in mind, however, that this name Jesus carries none of the meaning of the original Hebrew name, Yahusha, which means Yahuwah is salvation. We see below that after the return from exile, the Jews shortened the name Yahusha to Yeshua, again, out of reverent stupidity, I mean, reverent superstition. Greek form of a list of old T characters who in pre-exile Hebrew are called usually uh, the prophet Jeremiah Helionized to Jeremiah to remove the name Yah warned that this practice of removing Yahuwah's name would be handed down to us from the unfaithful priest interpreters and scribes when the Hebrew scriptures were first translated to Greek then to Latin and finally to English. 
Jeremiah 8.8 8. How can you say we are the wise? And the law of Yahuwah is with us. Behold, the lying pen of the scribes has falsified them and written them wrong. That's why today we have the foolish sounding names like Jesus, Joshua, Yeshua, and Yehosha, which do not honor or glorify our Heavenly Father Yahuwah because they carry none of the original intent and meaning. Well, there's more behind it. They want us worshiping Baal instead. Why is Jesus not the true name? Here we go. The reality is that the Greeks did not hold true to the intent of the name when translating it. Instead, they attempted a direct translation of each of the characters in Yeshua, which, is, which was the standard Hebrew form coming out of Babylonian captivity. But Yeshua is an error. We already learned that Yeshua is a later derivative of Yahusha, removing the name Yah, believing it to be too holy to pronounce. So the translators began with Yeshua, an uninspired later derivative instead of Yahusha. Yeshua removed the intent of the name of the Messiah to give glory to Yahuwah as our Savior. To get the name Jesus, the translators used Yeshua with the vowel pointing Yeshu in Hebrew, which was a common alternative form of the name Yahusha in later books of the Hebrew Bible translated after the Babylonian captivity. It was these books mistranslated book of the Hebrew Bible that were used among the Jews of the Second Temple period when Yahusha was born. Wow, way back then. The name Jesus corresponds is is a transliteration because Jesus cannot be translated from Hebrew directly to the Greek spelling Iesus. This name Iesus is the result of the translators then attempting to attempting a character by character translation from the erroneous Yeshua into Latin instead of translating the intent of the name which is what is important and which is what normally they would do with all the other definitions or words translating character by character was impossible as the character sets in Greek and Hebrew do not contain the same characters so they ended up with a transliteration of Iesus then from Isis we had Jesus, which was in the original King James Bible, and then ultimately Jesus today. Jesus is a modern name not even found in the original King James translation. So, the first point we want to point make is that the translators began with Yeshua and not Yahusha. And to come up with Isis that removed Yahuwah from the name of the Messiah and therefore fails the scriptural test of the Messiah's name. The Messiah was, was to come in the name of Yahuwah. Only those who declare Yahuwah is salvation will be saved, both Yeshua, which means he saves, and Jesus, which is not a Hebrew name at all, both fail this test, and there is only one name by which salvation can be assured. The Catholic Encyclo Encyclopedia admits that Jesus is a transliteration of the, a Latin word that represents the Greek form of Yeshua, which is itself a later derivative of the vowel dissimulation of Yosha, itself a contracted form of Yahushu, I don't even know how to say it, using the wrong vowel points of Elohim, should be Yahusha with the proper vowel points, or the contracted name sentence. Yahuwah is salvation, which points to the actual name given by the messengers of Yahuwah to Miriam, which tells us the real name is Yahusha. Yahuwah is salvation. Yahusha. The New Catholic Encyclopedia, Volume 7, page 970 through 971. Jesus, the name in English, the name Jesus, is a transliteration of the Latin form Iesus which represents the Greek form of the Hebrew name Yesh Yeshua. The later is a late form by vowel dissimulation of the name Yosha, itself a contracted form of Yehosha. Yahuwah is salvation. This was the name of Moses' successor, Joshua, son of Nun, both because of the name of the fame of this early hero of Israel and because of the meaning of the name. Many men, both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, bore the name of Joshua or Jesus. The Septuagint generally uses the Greek form Iesus, where the Hebrew text has the form Yosha. So also the New Testament, referring to Joshua, Joshua son of Nun, calls him Jesus. 
An allusion is made in Matthew 121 to the meaning of the name Yahuwah is salvation. Yeah. The Theological Dictionary of the New Testament by Kittle and Bromley, Volume 3, page 289, tells us that, in fact, the real name of the Messiah is a sentence name of Yahuwah is salvation, or Yahusha actually containing the tetragrammation. The full form is a sentence name in which the subject comes first and represents a form of the divine name and which in which the verb is a subsidiary form of the verb which is also found in the names like which means to help uh, explanation recognizes the two parts of a We see above that the full sentence name, Yahusha, notice the name contains the name Yah, followed by the Hebrew Sha, modern word Shua, which is derived from the Paleo Hebrew word Yasha, which means salvation, i.e., Yahusha. The shortened form Yeshua no longer expresses Yahuwah's name clearly. It is a passive voice putting the emphasis on Shua and means he saves thereby failing the biblical requirements that the Messiah must come in the name of Yahuwah. The Theological Dictionary of the New Testament, Kiddo and Bromley, Volume 3, page 209, gives us a clear insight into the pagan origins of the name Jesus. Yes. H. Lamer believes that the Greek Jesu, or Jesus, is a a masculine form of the goddess of salvation hmm. <clears throat> for which we have the form in Huron Men. So the goddess is the only figure in Greek mythology which can be brought into relation with Jesus oh. hmm. the next point I want to make concerning the name Jesus is that the name of the Messiah is a sentence name to convey the idea Yahuwah is salvation the Greek translators failed this test. Instead of translating the intent of the name using the Latin word for salvation, they translated or attempted to translate each character and lost the intent altogether. <coughs> the reality is they used Zeus to give glory to Zeus, as was their common practice in naming people and places the Greek and the Roman culture. Now to the good stuff. Jesus is not the proper translation into Greek. As a matter of fact, the name Jesus did not even exist in the English language 400 years ago, as evidenced by the fact that it was not recorded in the original King, 1611 King James Bible. But let's dissect that name anyway, as that has come to be the accepted name of the Messiah today. We need to address it. If the first part of the name, i.e., comes from Jehovah, following the Jewish superstition not to use Yahuwah, thereby using Elohim in the vowel points, resulting in ignorance of the name Jehovah. Excuse me. Century Bible, Volume 1, page 90-91. Sometime after the return from the captivity, and before the beginning of the Christian era, the Jews came to believe that the holy name Yahuwah was too sacred to be uttered on ordinary occasions. It was said to be pronounced by the high priest on the Day of Atonement. At other times, when anyone read or quoted aloud from what is called the Old Testament, the word Adoni, Lord, was usually substituted for Yahuwah, and similarly Septuagint has Kyrios and Lord, or Baal. Or the Hebrew has Yahuwah. Hebrew was originally written without vowels, but when the vowel points were added, the vowels of Adoni or Elohim were written with Yahuwah. As a direction that these words were to be read instead of the word whose consonants were Yahuwah. Thus we find the combinations. Reformation former being the more usual was sometimes used as the name of the mighty one of Israel, and owing to ignorance of its history was misread as Jehovah, a form which has established itself in English but does not give the pronunciation of the holy name it represents. 
Therefore, the prefix of the name J-E or I-E is an error, but does the suffix Seuss mean saves or salvation in the Greek of the New Testament period? No. <clears throat> we know for a fact that Iesus or Iesus was not then the proper way to translate the intent of the name given the Messiah that Yahuwah is salvation. Even in Greek or Latin, the Greek word for salvation is Strong's entry 4991, Soterin. It is not Seuss. Hmm, what is Seuss? Strong's number 4992, Soterin, objective meaning saving, bringing salvation. He who embodies this salvation, or through whom God is about to achieve in the hope of future salvation. So, if the translators were even true to their own language, it would not have been translated Jesus or Iesus, but rather something along the lines of Iesotrin. It must be obvious at this point where the suffix Seuss came from. Jesus holds to the Greek tradition of naming people after their pagan god of the pantheon, Zeus. Ta-da! Why did the translators use Seuss instead of Sotra. Hmm. Hmm. It should be noted that at this point that the Greeks had a similar naming conventions as did the Hebrews, where the Hebrews used Yah in the construction of their names giving glory to Yahuwah. The Greeks ended names and cities using Seuss and Sus and Us after their own god Zeus. Take, for example, the name of Julius Caesar, Gaius Julius, or the name of the Roman Emperor Constantine, who literally created Christianity, Flavius Valerius Aurelius, Constantinius Augustus. Huh. What has he got, ten names? There. The suffix us was added to Greek and Roman names to give glory to Zeus, where Yah was added to Hebrew names to give glory to Yahuwah. Jesus is just such a Greek name, like all Greek names, ending in us, that give glory to Zeus. Yes, I know, it's shocking. <coughs> Stick with me, everyone. I know this chapter is a long one. It is well worth your research. Dictionary of Christian Lore and Legend. It is known that the Greek name endings with Sus and Sui were attached by the Greeks to names and geographical areas as means to give honor to their supreme deity Zeus. <clears throat> this name of the true Messiah, Yahusha, being Hebrew, was objectionable to the Greeks and the Romans, who hated the Judeans, <laughs> the Jews. And so it was deleted from the records, and a new name was inserted. Yahusha was thus replaced by Isus. Hail Zeus. Now known to us as Jesus. Hmm. Very sad, I know. Very sad indeed. <clears throat> this is when the spirit of air either turns you to turn this video off right now or fills you with the spirit of truth and has you having looking at the Bible a different way now as did me Iesus in Greek so Yahusha is English for the Hebrew name of the Messiah anointed king of Israel and Jesus is the name of the Greek God man or Christos created in the image of Zeus it is that simple I'm sorry to admit. Ooh, but what does Aesis mean in Greek? Well, it has no meaning in Hebrew, as it is not a Hebrew word. In Greek, Aesis literally means translated, I'm sorry, literally translated means Hail Zeus. Hail Zeus. Really? <laughs> wow. The name Jesus didn't even exist until the 4th century and was a later derivative of the Latin name Isis and Jesu, both pagan gods. This would explain the Pope now, wouldn't it? 
It is known that the Greek name endings with Seus, Seus, or Sus were attached by the Greeks to names in their geographical areas as means to give honor to their supreme deity Zeus, Dictionary of Christian Lore and Legend. This name of the true Messiah, Joshua, being Hebrew, was objectionable to the Greeks and Romans who hated the Jews, and so it was deleted from the records and a new name inserted. Horrible. Joshua was thus replaced with Isus, Hail Zeus, now, now known to us as Jesus or Jesus, the origin of Christianity by A.B. Triana. It is simply amazing to think that all these years, hundreds of years, mankind has been calling the Savior by the wrong name. It is hard to give up the name Jesus because, well, it is so deeply ingrained in us and so much has been said and done in that name. The Gospel of the Kingdom, True Names and Titles by Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, 1931, Ohio, USA. <laughs> yeah, we can go on and on and on. In the 1611 KG New Testament, the name Yahusha appeared originally, wherever the Messiah was spoken of. Yahusha means Yahuwah is salvation. Later, the Messiah's name was replaced with Aesis, Greek, which later in the 1600s it became Jesus, starting with the new English letter J, which was introduced at that time further. The Greek Aesis comes from the name Zeus, the ruling god in the Greek pantheon. Gospel of the Kingdom, True Names and Titles, Dr. Henry Clifford, 1931, Ohio, USA. We see in historical documents that the name Jesus did not even come into existence until the late 1600s, early 1600s, when the letter J was introduced into our English language. So the name Jesus is only around 400 years old. <laughs> yeah, who should? It's 2000, this, he was born 2012, over 2,000 years ago. We are blinded and dumbed down by our scholars, by our religions, by our politics, by every angle, from every side. Satan is around every corner. Jesus is only 400 years old. The Greek Isis comes from the name Zeus, the ruling god in the Greek pantheon. Jesus is a transliteration of a Latin name, only one letter off, Isis, pronounced Jesus, which has no meaning in Hebrew, but in Latin means Hail Zeus. So if Yahusha's name had been transliterated into our language, it would have been Joshua. Yet the name was treated properly using the compound naming convention Yahuwah intended it would have been Yahusha, a shortened down, or I'm sorry, Yahweh Yahshua, Yahuwah Yasha, or Yahuwah Yahshua, a shortened down to Yahusha, using the short contracted form maintaining the meaning of the name and fulfilling the prophecy that the Messiah came in the name of Yahuwah, our Creator. If the name was handled properly in the Greek by the uninspired pagan scribes, it would hold true to the meaning of the name as given by the angel to Joseph and Mary. Then Shua, or salvation, would have been translated Sotren, or Soter, not Zeus. So we see a gross mishandling of the Messiah's name at best. But when you look back into history, we see a Hellenization of the name with the intent to give glory to the pagan god Zeus. This is why they started using Lord instead of Yahuwah and Zeus instead of Jesus. This is why they changed it from Saturday to Sunday, from Passover to Easter. And this is why everyone thinks that the Apostle Paul, which was Shaw, just all of a sudden said we don't have to keep the law anymore. Start making sense now? We have been bamboozled hoodwinked, scammed. The reason behind this abomination is clearly seen. The name Jesus has the exact same suffix as the name of the Roman Emperor who created it. Flavius, Valerius, Allurus, Constantinus, Augustus. 
Why does every word in Constantine's name end with an us? It would only stand to reason that all that the all-powerful emperor at the time would give a name to his new god in his own image with the suffix us. After all, Constantine believed himself to be the reincarnated Apollo of the son of Zeus. Apollo. Constantine believed himself to be the reincarnated Apollo, the son of Zeus, and he remained he remade the Messiah in his own image and then elevated that image of the false Messiah in the name of Jesus as God to be worshipped and then named that Christianity. Yes, I know. This act of paganizing the Messiah and worshipping an image of the man of a man above Yahuwah is condemned by Paul in a letter to the church in Rome in Romans 1. It could not be more clear. We are not to worship an image of a man, Jesus, above our Creator. First, second, and third commandment. Hello. Okay, Romans 1, verse 21. Because that when they knew Yahuwah, they glorified Yahuwah, not as God, elevating Jesus' trinity in their hearts as God incarnate. Neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts were darkened to believe a pagan lie. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and exchanged the glory of the immortal Yahuwah for images made to look like a mortal man, the image of Jesus and the birds and the animals and so on and so forth, the reptiles, signs of the zodiac. Therefore, Yahuwah gave them over in the sinful desires of their hearts to a sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth about Yahuwah for a lie, a pagan trinity, and worshipped and served created things rather than the Creator, who the Creator Yahuwah is forever praised Hallelujah, Yahuwah. Okay, let's go back to that for a second. <clears throat> Elevating an image of man, of a man, a human, above God. Okay. They were given over to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. Is that not describe the devil or today's age with the transgenderization the whole you know all the people in the church have been molested does that not explain that a little bit Christians I know this is going to be hard it was a little hard for me because I was a Christian too uh, yeah There's about a hundred trinities, all of them pagan. You know, the Hebrew religion, it's not really, I don't even want to call it religion, they call it a sect, the Nazarenes. Never once is there a trinity mentioned in the original scriptures or manuscripts. This is the church bait and switching using replacement theology, synchronicity, and helianization to get the whole world to believe in a mystery religion of Babylon. Rome sits on seven hills. Okay, I'm sorry, I'll just continue on here. When we simply take the first step and admit to ourselves the obvious, it becomes abundantly clear both why and how the name Jesus was easily accepted by a pagan population that worshiped Zeus, Jesus, Horus, Krishna, Julius Caesar, and the demigod Apollo, the god of the sun. To the pagan Romans of their day, the name Isis, Jesus Christ, or J.C., looked and sounded almost identical to their god-man, Julius Caesar, or J.C. This is true today, even in English. Julius Caesar, or I'm sorry, Julius Jesus, even their initials remain the same and have nothing in common with Yahusha, the Messiah. The English translation of Yahusha looks nothing and sounds nothing like Jesus, as it is Joshua, or even truer still, Yahusha. The obvious truth 
is the Messiah's name was changed and he was given a name like every other Greek in honor of Zeus. No wonder Yahusha condemns those who in his name did all that amazing stuff using the name of Jesus. Teaching the law has been abolished. They never knew him. They literally fell for the false religion of pagan Rome. Woo! The English name Jesus. As I stated earlier in this chapter, we are going to reverse engineer this name Jesus. And when we do, it traces directly back to Babylon, no matter how we look at it. But what would happen if we look at the name Jesus as a compound English name, composed as English words are of the Latin prefix and suffix, G and sus, like Yahusha. Let's take a look at that. We must look at we must look at it that way because the true name of the Messiah was a compound name, Yah, Yahuwah, Yahshua, salvation. In Hebrew, supposedly Jesus comes from the name of the Messiah. So if we break it down into component parts, what does it say about Jesus in English? Does it identify the Passover lamb sacrifice of Yahuwah or an abominable sacrifice of a pig on Easter? Does it begin to bring into focus the exact same sacrifice of the Ishtar pig, Easter, which is the unquestioned sacrifice of the false religion of Christianity, as well as Babylon? Let's look at the prefix je and suffix sus in the English dictionary. When considering the prefix, we find that je is another form of ge derived from the Latin Greek word for earth. Ge -E, is a short form of Gia or G which is the mother earth or Roman goddess Tellus. The suffix sus comes from the Latin word pig, sus. Sus in Latin means pig. This is where we get the pig call sui. So in English if we examine the name Jesus as a compound name it means literally earthly pig or pig Tellus, goddess mother earth or the beast that came out of the earth maybe. The name Jesus in no way implies or means Yahuwah is salvation. Shocking, I know. Okay, below is the Webster's entry for the suffix J-E and sus. J-E or G-E. Gia, derived from Earth. In Greek mythology, the Earth is personified as a goddess, mother of Uranus, the Titans, etc. Mother Earth. <clears throat> you notice how the climate change, they want to save the planet. This, oh, ooh. Identified by the Romans with Tellus, other Gia, G, whatever. You guys get the point. Zeus. Mm -hmm. Latin, English, Latin, Java Dictionary. Yeah. Pig, swine, hog. So, Jesus literally means beast of the earth. In fulfillment of Revelation 13, the swine or pig is the most abominable beast in the Torah. Oh, what do you know? See how they reverse everything? Satan likes to reverse it. Turn it upside down. Flip it around. Now we see why Revelation identifies the beast as the beast of the earth. It is literally telling us the name of the Antichrist. Now we are coming closer to the false messiah's sacrifice on Easter to the goddess Ishtar, a pig in replace of the Passover lamb. That is why we eat ham on Easter, because a, ki a pig killed Ishtar's son Tammuz, later called Apollo, Jesus, Horus, Krishna, then Jesus. Mm, this is why we got the Trinity. We are taught that anyone obedient to the dietary laws of Yahuwah are not true Christians, which is true, because the followers of Yahusha were called Nazarenes, the Hebrew title for a Hebrew god the Hebrew Messiah. So, to prove our total lawlessness in the eyes of Yahuwah, we actually eat the most unclean, abominable animal that is not even food on Ishtar Day and worship the earthly pig or beast of the earth. The most abominable animal to Yahuwah in his word, a pig, we eat it in defiance to a pagan god we have elevated in our hearts above Yahuwah and then we disobey Passover. Welcome to the abomination of desolation. Whew. 
with those who commit such abominable sacrifice in their hearts on Easter and are disobedient to the Passover are not true sons of Yahuwah. I will prove this in my ne in, we will prove this next when we look at how and why Passover was changed to Istar Easter and a pig sacrificed eaten instead of a lamb on Passover as Yahuwah instructed and Yahusha confirmed Passover is an everlasting ordinance of the living God Yahuwah. Luke 22:19 And when he had taken some bread and given thanks on Passover he broke it and gave it to them saying this Passover dinner is my body Passover lamb which is given sacrifice for you do this keep Passover in remembrance of me Exodus 12 verse 14 so this day shall be to you a memorial and you shall keep it as a feast to the to Yahuwah throughout your generations you shall keep it as a feast by an everlasting ordinance hmm so Yahusha is English for the Hebrew name of the Messiah anointed king of Israel and Jesus is the name of the Greek Savior or Christos all pagan God men were called Christ such as Christos Mithras and Krishna etc it is that simple but what does Isis mean in Greek it has no meaning in Hebrew as it is not a Hebrew word in Greek Isis literally translated means hail Zeus you guessed it so both the prefix of IE and the suffix of Zeus are in error and are mistranslations of the Hebrew name Yah and Shua. In the 21st century we have no need to trace the Messiah's name through pagan Rome or any other religions or languages. <clears throat> we today can simply translate it directly from Hebrew to English leaving out all of the transliteration errors going from Latin, Greek, you know, and all the English variations. Proverbs 34 Who has gone up to heaven and come down? Whose hands have gathered up the wind? Who has wrapped up the waters in a cloak? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is the name of his son? Surely you know. Hmm. A Christian doesn't. His name is Yahuwah as given to Moses his son's name is Yahusha the true English translation directly from as given to Yosef and Miriam directly from Yahuwah that is I know that's a long chapter everyone it's uh, it's very important that we watch it though follow through and watch the whole thing thank you for listening and reading along God bless. Shalom.